Recently, I renewed my daughter's passport. I had to go to the police office three times, wait for hours in long queues, pay cash to the post office, and fill out tons of forms of repetitive data. And why? Why did I waste so many hours of my life? When just a few years ago, I went to renew my own passport. But since I need it uh, immediately for business reasons, they proposed me the magic solution, the fast track. Once I demonstrated the urgency and paid the extra, miracle, I got my passport in five minutes. Whenever I see a fast track, I know there is a slow process. And the slow process often means a lot of wasted time. But what is the impact of all this waste? With simple calculations, if every single person would waste one of their 200 working days to renew the passport every five years, that's 0.1% of GDP. In a country like Italy, this is 2 billion euros of missed GDP. And that's only for passport. Now imagine the impact of the waste from ID and license request, work permit, tax declarations. That's several points of GDP. Solving this problem of waste would have a greater impact of what lawmakers achieve through a typical financial act. For the last 25 years, I've analyzed how companies create value for their customers. And my research shows that, uh, on average, only 5% of labor really create value. 5%. Can you imagine? Most of our time is wasted. Five minutes to issue a passport is enough. Companies must analyze their value streams, which is the sequence of activity to create value for their customers and dig inside of each tiny activity, questioning its purpose. Which activity really matters? And what is just a legacy? Are you wasting your labor by over-controlling, executing redundant tasks, or fixing issues? By rethinking the true purpose of each task, you will discover what is waste and what is the real gold of your company the creation of value. Here is an example. What is the difference between a bunch of ears of corn, 200 grams of flour, and a pizza? Organically, not much, but they have different value. Labor and know-how can transform 20 cents of corn into two euros of flour and then into a 20 euro pizza. We act like uh, the economy is this big, complicated thing, but uh, income, dividends, the stock of the private equity who owns the pizzeria, their futures, forward, swap, long and short options, their cost of capital, even the interest rate of the central banks, they are all derivatives of the real gold, which is the human labor which transformed cheaper corn into expensive pizza. Without that human labor, none of it exists. And when you add up all the value created by the people in a country, that's the GDP. Unproductive labor has no real impact on GDP. So here is the exciting part. If 5% of the labor generates today the entire GDP, imagine if we could increase it just to 10%. 10% of your workday is what? 45 minutes? With these 45 minutes, we could double the GDP. The challenge is first to discover this real gold, because it is hidden in an ocean of wasted labor. Where do we look first? Well, one of the best places to find waste is in companies' processes because they usually reflect your company's past more than its present or future. These legacies are massive waste generators. Accountant matching purchase orders with invoices is a legacy of offline transactions. Submitting your timesheet online is a legacy of 
punching into work with a physical stamp. My bank keeps sending me account balances as a PDF. So not only I waste my time by logging in, downloading, opening the PDF, but searching a specific transactions is as difficult as it was 40 years ago on paper. Instead of carrying these legacies into the future, we should take a step back. When companies analyze each and every activity of their value streams, they should ask, why am I doing this? Is it still necessary? Can I use today's technology to make it more efficiently? Another consequence of this legacy is that we spend a large portion of our life by filling out the same useless data over and over again. To buy a plane ticket online, some airline companies require name, family name, date of birth, ID number, expiration date, country, gender, with the distinction Miss and Mrs. For what? So someone with my same name cannot use my ticket? So my wife can't give her boarding pass to another lady with her same name, born on her same date, but still unmarried, so miss and non missus? And today you shouldn't need the gender in the passport or a ticket. This is a legacy of a time where men and women didn't have the same rights. So take a closer look at the data you collect. For each piece of information, consider, is it really necessary? And do we already have it? I remember one company's database showing that 30% of their customers were Afghan accountant. What are the odds of that? Why so many accountants from Afghanistan? Obviously, the first job listed alphabetically in the drop-down menu was accountant, and the first country was Afghanistan. But what this tells me is that the company didn't need this information, and the customer didn't want to spend the time filling it. Another likely source of waste is over-controllership. I worked with a company whose procurement process required 23 control checkpoints. Now, how many of these 23 people were looking closely, do you think? And is it more likely that none of them were paying careful attention, assuming that at least one of the other 22 were? Too often, over-controllership kills controllership because it kills accountability. I was listening to a legal department complain that uh, in addition to checking every contract for compliance, they were fixing grammar and spelling. Because people drafting the contract knew that the lawyer would fix it. But come on, a lawyer to check a spelling? That's expensive, isn't it? Instead, we should ask ourselves, is that control check really necessary? The answer is quite simple, just math. Does it cost more to do the check or to fix the mistake if it occurs? This gets tricky with a very low probability, very high cost of failure event. People tend to over mitigate. And in many cases, this creates even more problems. In UK, all commercial fire alarm systems must be tested weekly. And you often see inside the building uh, signs like uh, fire test every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Now, if you were a criminal, at what time and which day would you commit your crime without worrying too much about alarms? Overmitigation creates also a lot of waste. First, because of false positives like a credit check continuously blocking orders with no real risk on payment. Second, because of pure overprocessing. My cinema app requires I change my passport every three months. Six to eight letters, uppercase, lowercase, special signs, numbers. Whenever I need to use it, I spend 10 minutes to log in. But this is to avoid what? that a hacker go to the cinema at my place? If they go, I hope they enjoy the movie. 
because the real risk to the cinema company is that I buy fewer tickets. Logging in was so inconvenient that I stopped using the app. Companies should not sacrifice their customer journey for the sake of over-risk mitigation. And by the way, making something difficult for your customers, it does not mean he'll be difficult for a professional hacker. More likely, he'll mean less sales and less value created. Altogether, these small changes to your company's processes can have a profound effect. Entrepreneurs and managers should refocus their priority into the real gold. Attract talent, help them grow, channel their energy into the real value creation. But there is another reason, arguably more important. A world with less waste and more time dedicated to true value creation is a more sustainable world where people can enjoy their work more. Free from time-wasting, frustration and distraction, they would have more time with their family and friends. They would enjoy more art, more entertainment. The real gold of our economy is in your hands. Please, for a better world, strive to create more value. Thank you.